Hello and welcome to this in-between video. Um, we're not going to make a module today. We are going to find out how dual PWM works. Uh, so this is just a short introduction. That's what this video is going to be about. Uh, I'm going to use dual PWM for probably quite a lot of modules after this. But first I'd, I'd like to uh, dive in and just understand how it works and why it works. So that's what we're going to do and we're probably going to be mostly in the computer and maybe on some paper. So let's go and do that. All right. To explain dual PWM, I need to go back to the port manipulation parallel shift out and the R to R filter we talked about uh, while doing the Sith module and then we'll go through normal PWM to finally end up down here with dual PWM and as you can see I've been busy at work doing diagrams with color and everything so the R2R filter it is basically a bunch of voltage dividers that takes so you have ground down here you have a value of 2R and then you have value of 2R down to each of the output pins of an Arduino for example or whatever the, the, the whatever thing you use to set the bits for the value so the closer to ground of course is a smaller value and the closer to the voltage output it is it has a greater value on this voltage divider and that way you get this so you just put voltage on the pin on the first pin and you get a low value on the second pin and then you add these pins together to finally end up at maximum or 5 volts. And to illustrate this, I have done a small simple sketch in the Arduino IDE that just does exactly this with three pins on the Arduino out here to this little R2R network that you see here and then the output goes here. And here you can see, well, we just binary add these pins together and we get this value going up and down. This is at this point very slow, of course, two, two changes per second. Uh, but uh, for this to sound like audio, of course, we need to go up in the thousands per second. So if we move on to PWM doing the exactly the same thing as we did up here with the R2R -R, counting from 0 to 7 then that would look like this. So instead of building on the height immediately on the voltage we spread out the voltage over time. So a 0 is just a so we have 5 volts up here and 0 volts down here and 0 is just of course the whole time period so this is a period of 7 7 uh, segments and they're all 0 which means that when we send this value the PWM value of 0 we will get 0 volts but if we add the 1 bit so we get one bit here, then we get one seventh of five volts, the same as up here. We can also see there's one seventh of five volts and that green dot there. And down here, this green dot line is one seventh of, a, of five volts. Uh, and then we add the, uh, then we add only the second bit, the third bit, and finally over here we have all the bits and all the time segment is 7 out of 7 times 5 volts so that is 5 volts. If you repeat one of these values over and over and over 
the output of this will kind of act as it is a voltage between 0 and 5 depending on which one it is you are sending but because there are gaps in the voltage and it is actually a PWM so it's still a square signal so even if you're carrying a you want it to be a straight voltage it will still be a wave and that is why you have an RC filter so a low pass filter uh, with an resistor and a capacitor to ground is the easiest one and that is to smooth out these things uh, so it looks more like a straight voltage and again I've done a sketch to demonstrate this um, you can't have a 3-bit PWM signal so I've cheated a bit by doing the segments larger but this is basically what you see up here is what is happening down here so we move up to 5 volts there and then we move slowly down to 0 volts and this is so each of these is called a duty cycle and the bigger the segment with it, when it's 5 volts the higher the voltage of course and now we're measuring directly on the pin there's just an resistor in there um, but if we do this into a RC filter instead by attaching a 100 microfarad to ground and let's <laughs> now you see that this is a voltage moving and if we zoom out to where we were around with the other one you see that it is now stepping the voltages up and down but it's not as exact as it was uh, up in the uh, up here and that is because the capacitor makes it slew in, in the in the voltage it does take some time for the signal to settle which is not that good you can try different variants so if we go down to 10 microfarad it will look like this So now you see it's a bit more jagged in the edges but there's still ripple so there's ripple because the in the when there's no if we go back to this so as soon as there's no signal the voltage dips down and that's not that good either so there's that's the bad side of PWM that you have this signal that you need to filter out the noise so to speak here's also a one microfarad you can try that as well but as you will see we have this very noisy signal now and then finally we come down here to dual PWM and what we do here is actually a combination of these two because we have two PWM signals which are the ones you see here you have we have the least significant bits plural this time and most significant bits uh, so just like up here this one will look very much the same except that this is a lower value we don't have the full 5 volts here and going up there and when we got up here and we have filled this whole duty cycle so it's 100% then we start over from 0 
in the small, in the least significant byte, and we add a 1 to the most significant bytes and that one just stays on for this whole row while we count up to seven again start over put the two on the most significant byte and this of course continues for the whole row three four five six seven and down here is when we have the full five volts lots and lots and lots of more values doing with two dual PWM. And why I say it's a combination of those two is because we have two values, R values here, and R1 is equal, let's say R1 is equals 1K, that's what we've done here, then R2 is equal to 2 to the power of the amount of bits of R1, uh, times R1. So that is so we have three bits, so that R2 is 2 to the power of 3, which is 8 times 1K, so 8K. And that's basically what we do here is we just add, it's not exactly like this, but it's similar to this, that we add all, the, we just jump over all these resistors here because we've gone all the way up here, so we add those resistors together to get the second resistor for the for the least significant bit because the least significant bit has the larger value of course because that voltage divider divides that down a bit and then we add a capacitor for the filter again and here is the example sketch for this um, we have two outputs, two PWM outputts, pin 9 and 10. We have one 1K resistor and one 8K resistor, or 8.2 actually, so it's not that exact. What you see down here is basically this, it's just I drew it a bit differently, uh, but you see how the least significant bits is starting here counting up to seven adding a one and then counting up to seven again adding the two adding the three adding the four adding the five and so on until we are up at fully right there and uh, yeah and then it counts down and again we take our 100 nanofarad microfarad sorry 100 microfarad and we will see this curve moving way slower now because we have many more values in between and if we move out to here somewhere should be able to see a bit more the value moving up slowly slowly again it is a bit jagged don't know what to say about that and it does do a bump up there I don't know why it does that could be my code but this is the power of dual PWM then much higher resolution let's try another one and we have this ripple again so yeah the RC filter I think is the big drawback of all PWM circuitry and I'm going to stop the video here and instead do a part two with the next few things. So what we've learned right now up until this moment is not useful for audio, the PWM stuff, the port manipulation, bit banging stuff that works fine. As you can see in the uh, Arduino Sith module I did 
the sample and hold module Arduino sample and hold module Sith uh, that I did in the previous videos. If you watch that video, you can see that we can use port manipulation to get really nice signals, uh, which was the first of the techniques today. But the two PWM are not useful right now because the carrier signal, the speed of the PWM is actually in the hearable range uh, between 500 and 1000 hertz. Um, so we go through how to fix that. We, I'm going to discuss the ratio between the two resistors, uh, which it could be an issue. And also maybe we could watch or see a few other filters that we can use to uh, filter out the carrier signal better and get a cleaner and better analog output after the PWM. So again, I'm going to leave that for another video, so not let this drone out for too long. I want to say thank you to my patrons who are, again are very very patient with me with all these uh, videos that is taking very long time to make. Um, there's a lot of theory in these and I really want to get it right and I really want to learn. I really want I really want to know how things work. And then I want to be able to uh, tell that to you and it's a really difficult process from time to time um, if you only knew how many of these um, different PWM uh, drawings I've done to get the, the to get them right and especially the dual PWM uh, to get it somewhat right as you can see it wasn't exactly as I drawn but there's yeah we can get into that in the next part of this video so anyway, thank you for watching, hope you learned something, and uh, see you in the next one. See if we can make up something fun in that one. We're not going to make something fun in the next one either. It's just going to be another theory like this one. And then next after that, we're going to use this knowledge. So yeah, until then, take care, bye.